My boyfriend has been acting a little weird lately. It's the stories he stays up watching all night in the basement. They're making him paranoid. I sometimes wake up at night not finding him beside me, and then I could see him sitting in the corner of the bedroom, staring at me with his wide blue eyes. Mason, are, are you all right? Without blinking his creepy eyes, he nods his head very slowly from left to right and says, No. What is it? I think something very bad is going to happen to me. What? Why? Because I... And then he would stare at me blankly for a minute straight, completely silent, completely still. Mason, you're scaring me now. Stop this nonsense. Come back to bed. I'll... I'll take the couch tonight. This has become the deal every other night. I'm fed up with his weird behavior. But he's the best boyfriend I've ever had. He's such a hard worker and is always bringing me sweets and gifts home. I love him and the routine we put ourselves into. Mason often works late, but when he gets home, we have dinner, watch Big Brother, and then go to bed. We do different things from there. He usually stays up and watches scary stories on MJV, and I browse Instagram. But you all know how it is. I want to be a part of the things he enjoys. Finally, Mason showed me this YouTube channel after begging him to let me watch some of his favorite stories. As I said, Mason has been acting strange lately, and I know it's because of these stories. He's added a sort of patrol to our nightly routine. He makes sure all the doors and windows are locked and all the curtains are closed before coming to bed. I find it silly. We live in a good neighborhood. We've never had any trouble. There's nothing out there for him to be afraid of. He always brushes me off and tells me it's just for peace of mind. One night, after checking all the locks and curtains, Mason climbed into bed. We watched YouTube for a while and then kissed goodnight. It took only a few minutes for him to fall asleep, and when he did, I quietly got out of bed and went into the kitchen. When I came back, I watched him sleep for a moment. He looked so sweet, pure, and innocent. He opened his eyes and tried to sit up abruptly when I slit his throat. Blood gushed as the knife ran smoothly, like it was cutting through butter, spewing everywhere on my face my clothes, on the bedside lamp. I sighed, knowing I'd have to get rid of my satin nightgown. I threw the knife aside and pulled the previous prepared gas can from its hiding spot in the guest room. I sang to myself as I poured the gasoline all over Mason's now still body, all over the bed and on the carpet in a trail leading to the door. I lit a match and unceremoniously dropped it watched only momentarily as the flames caught and then walked away. Why would I do such a thing to the man I love, you ask? <laughs> well, it's simple. The real reason Mason had been working so hard was the cute blonde he had met a few months before. And since then, he forgot about me. Night after night, he kept lying to me. He would meet her at night, saying he took some extra shifts. The gifts he would bring me were for tokens of his betrayal. A cheap way to compensate for the emotional void is with material pleasure. That's why I had to go to such an extent to make him pay for breaking my heart. The reason why Mason acted weird was something more than those stories. When I couldn't make him continue to cheat on me, I decided to draw the line. I followed him one night and found out the girl's address. I saw them kissing, standing on her porch. My blood boiled. I wanted to kill both of them right there, but revenge is a dish best served cold. Last week, Mason went to see his grandparents in Austria. Dressed in Mason's clothes, I went to the girl's house and rang the bell. I kept my head down so she couldn't see my face clearly. That stupid blonde opened the door calling out, Mason, what a surprise. 
And just then, I pepper sprayed her. Screaming in pain, she moved back from the door and I entered the house, locking it behind me. What fun we had after that. I tied her to the couch, gagged her with pretty pink socks. She stared at me widely, just like Mason from those nights. God, I loved the fear in her eyes. I felt a little bad for her, so I decided to make it easy. I closed her eyes while smiling at her. It gives me immense satisfaction to know I was the last face she saw before death. I injected her in the neck, right into the vein with an empty syringe. Within the next 10 seconds, her heart stopped and left a note for Mason. I knew he will come to see her first thing in the morning after he came home. I knew the note would set him paranoid. Since he came home, he changed. The reason why he looked out of the windows every night before going to bed is for the cops. He made sure he locked the doors so the writer of that note doesn't get to come in. <laughs> Only if he knew he was living with her. <laughs> I wish I could have seen his face when he read that note right next to his mistress's body. It was so easy to scapegoat Mason. I couldn't believe he actually got rid of the body. There was nothing in the news of the blonde girl's death, but when the missing report started to spread out, Mason got even more nervous. And that's when I knew the time was right. One thing that played like my lucky card was the stories of MJV. Those scary stories triggered him in the most vulnerable moment. The cops will be here after some time. I'm sure they have already traced their text messages. The world will know Mason killed the girl to be with his girlfriend and ended up dying in a terrible house fire. The case will be closed and I will be on the road looking out for my next Mason. <laughs> A formless darkness spreads over the land, draining away all joy and excitement. The name of this creeping horror? Boredom. But one RPG stands alone against the gloom. Rage Shadow Legends helps you slay boredom with complex strategies, gorgeous graphics, and countless character build options. How does it work? In Raid Shadow Legends, you'll build and level teams of champions to loot dungeons, kill monsters, and battle players around the globe. You can also take on an incredible array of challenging bosses. Take Bomal the Dreadhorn. He's a flame-spewing, bomb-throwing beast who sets explosive traps and summons tough kamikaze minions. You'll have to get creative with your debuffs and healing to avoid being overwhelmed by waves of defense, bypassing damage. And Bomal is just one of tons of awesome bosses to test yourself against. There's a ton going on in Raid Shadow Legends this month. The ongoing Summer Splash event series gives you a shot at tons of awesome prizes, like an exclusive new skin for the hard-hitting dwarf champion, Trunda. Plus, right now you can score the brand new legendary champion, Deliana, just by playing the game for seven days in a row. Deliana's an incredible support champion who can crack enemy resistance while boosting and healing your team. Even better news for new players, you can use the promo code MYDELIANA to nab 50 XP brews and pump her up to max level instantly. There's no better time to join Raid, especially since my viewers can get a bunch of starting bonuses by scanning this QR code. It'll start you off with a free epic champion, Aina, to give your early team some hard-hitting muscle. You'll also get an energy refill, an XP boost, 200,000 silver, and an ancient shard so you can summon powerful champions right away. So scan that code, claim your loot, and dive into the endless adventure of Raid Shadow Legends. I can't seem to shake this horrible feeling. It's like a sixth sense going off, leaving me in a constant state of anxiety-ridden fear. It's been weeks like this. I've tried to rationalize what's happening the best I can, but for the life of me, I can't find a logical explanation. I'm just looking for some advice now. My boyfriend, Jeremy, and I have been together for a little over three years, 
mostly through a long distance while I'm finishing my degree. Things have been wonderful, and I've experienced some of my happiest moments, at least up until a few weeks ago when it started. It wasn't until my first night back at his place over the summer that I noticed anything. We must have dozed off around midnight. I remember jolting awake at 2 a.m., flashing on the screen of Jeremy's alarm clock. I couldn't tell you what woke me, but whatever it was stayed quiet enough for Jeremy to stay soundly asleep. I felt a shiver go down my spine and that horrible, anxious sixth sense sounding alarms in my head. Given the placement of Jeremy's bed, I had a clear view of his bedroom, bathroom, and closet door, which all sat against the same wall. Through the darkness, my eyes darted from corner to corner, but I didn't see anything unusual. I just couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. After a few more seconds of investigating, it hit me. His bedroom door sat against the wall, wide open. We weren't the type of people to sleep in our bedroom with the doors open, and over the years, I even picked up the habit of locking mine before bed, and I could have sworn I did the same to his. My heart sank to my stomach as my eyes adjusted to the darkness. A figure loomed in the doorway, staring back at me. I guess I assumed someone broke in. I don't know. Whatever it was stood quietly watching me as I frantically fumbled around the sheets with my hand, searching to shake Jeremy awake. Jeremy, wake up, wake up. Mm -hmm. It took a step closer, towering above the doorframe. Keeping my eyes on the figure, I aggressively shook Jeremy's shoulder. Jeremy! I hissed under my breath, petrified tears forming in my eyes. Jeremy, there's someone here. With my other hand, I felt along with the nightstand until I came upon my phone. What? He sat up, rubbing his eyes awake. Another step closer. Looking at me, Jeremy nudged my face towards him and wiped my tear-stained cheek. What's going on, babe? I pressed my home button, hoping to call 911, but the screen stayed black. There's someone in the room! I whispered hysterically, hitting my phone in a poor attempt to make it turn on. Using his phone, Jeremy turned on the flashlight and moved the light around the room. Nobody's here, babe, he said, looking up from his phone's blank screen. I made the same discovery. Sure enough, the room was empty and the bedroom door soundly shut. After explaining what I'd seen, Jeremy argued that I woke up from a bad dream, that nothing was there and with the alarm system, nothing would have gotten in. I forced him to search the house. He didn't find anything and didn't believe me, but I know what I saw. Since then, I haven't been back other than a dinner date and even that night, I knew something was wrong. I've slept at my mom's ever since. I told Jeremy I missed my family, even though the reality was being too afraid to sleep at his place again. We FaceTime every night as a habit. Being in a long distance is anything but easy, so we tried to make the distance less noticeable, like sleeping on FaceTime or talking throughout the day. Two nights ago, he said he'd be up late with the guys and didn't want to bother waking me, so I went to bed without calling. Around 2 a.m., I woke up to my phone ringing and Jeremy's contact picture lighting up on the screen. Hello? I answered the FaceTime groggily. It was dark and silent. Baby, are, are you there? I asked again. No response. I thought you weren't calling tonight, silly. Guessed you missed me too much, I joked. The call ended. After a few minutes of feeling really weird and honestly concerned, I called back. It took a few rings for him to finally answer and when he did, he sounded like he'd been asleep for hours. Mm, hey, uh, is everything okay? Yeah, everything is fine. I was just calling you back. Did your phone die? What are, you, what are you talking about? 
You just called me. Just didn't talk or anything. Maybe you fell asleep after you dialed. I didn't call you, babe. I've been asleep for like an hour. No outgoing call to you. Maybe you were just dreaming. Maybe. It just feels a little weird. Listen, I have to be up in a few hours. Uh, I know you've been on edge lately, but please put this behind you. You're just under stress. Okay? I love you. I hope you get your mind off of whatever you thought you saw. I nodded, but asked him to stay on the phone until he left for work in the morning. I don't like feeling crazy or experiencing horrible anxiety without cause. I understand the I saw something in the middle of the night bit is easily dismissible, but the feeling I'm having isn't. I've always felt like women have a special sense of danger. It's like knowing when to walk a little quicker to your car late at night or grouping yourself with other women at a bar. It's knowing you aren't safe in your environment. Last night threw me over the edge and I haven't been back to his apartment since. We FaceTimed as usual and fell asleep after. I woke up to rustling on the phone, which is usually muted to spare me from his snoring. I checked the clock to see if it was time for him to go to work. 2 AM. I watched the screen looking for Jeremy. It was clear the phone was moving in the dark, seeing the ceiling move from the dim glow of the window. Jeremy? The camera stopped moving. Baby, I asked again. It started again, this time passing his ceiling fan. There was a soft thud against the nightstand, and I now looked at what seemed to be an upward-facing view of his bedside lamp. Hey, what's going on? There was a muffled groan and movement from what sounded like bedsheets. Babe! I said firmly. What's wrong? He groaned sleepily. I explained to him what I'd seen and asked if everything was okay. He assured me he'd been asleep and didn't know what I was talking about. Jeremy, please check your bedroom. After some more pressure, he gave in and checked his closet, bathroom, and the remainder of his apartment with his phone in his hand. I told you it was nothing. Someone was in your bedroom. Someone unmuted the phone and was walking around your freaking bedroom. You need to stop this, Kiera. It's becoming annoying now. I watched Jeremy get irritated. The camera screen shown him sitting on his bed staring at me with angry eyes. I was going to explain how all this was never a bad dream, just when I saw his window lift. A skinny, tall man entered his room. I was so taken aback from this that for a few seconds I forgot to talk. The man got in without Jeremy noticing and stood behind him. He wore this weird black suit like he was going to a funeral. The most terrifying thing was he had no face. Seeing me, all pale and quiet, all of a sudden Jeremy asked, What? What is it? There's someone behind you. Stop this nonsense. Enough! Saying this, Jeremy turned around, and what happened next will forever be imprinted in my memory. The man grabbed Jeremy's neck and lifted him in the air. His phone fell to the ground, and I could see Jeremy's feet dangling in the air. The screen could only capture his feet. The sound of choking mixed with heavy breathing went on for a few seconds, and then everything went silent. A loud thud took place like someone threw something heavy on the floor. I screamed in fear. Jeremy! When that weird looking man picked up the phone from the floor and showed me Jeremy's bedroom, the camera slowly revolved around the room and stopped reaching the doorway. Right near the bedroom door, my boyfriend was lying dead on the floor. His eyes were coming out in fear. His tongue was hanging out of his mouth. His blue face was horrible. Oh my god. 
God, Jeremy. I cried in pain. Now the man faced the camera at him. It was terrifying to look at his faceless face. He smiled big, flashed his sharp teeth and said in a demonic voice, I'll be back for you. The cops ruled out the investigation of Jeremy's death as an accident. Some say he choked on his own, while others assured me that they looked for an intruder. But no one believed me when I told them about his killer. Everyone just stared at me like I'm some psycho. I don't know what to do next. Is there anyone who believes me? Because whatever that creature was, it indeed is coming for me now. I can feel its eyes on me when I sleep at night.